it's a long straight tomorrow it's going to be a very interesting race tomorrow and um, the qualifying will be nice but this is fp3 before i move into fp3 let me quickly say this there was a breaking news that there was fire at the mclaren kitchen it affected some part of their kitchen there were emergency services and one person from what i saw in the video was taken to the hospital in the stretcher and i hope everything is okay now and they are well get well and good management to mclaren team also max verstappen has taken his fourth engine in spain i just said i should keep you updated on that because i've said this some time ago that with the way it is going the pressure is getting much and it's getting worse and as the pressure is getting worse it is giving red bull the impetus to push themselves it's not just max pushing the car to the limit is using a lot of engine power <laughs> and that is going to accumulate to him using more than the allocated engine which is four for the season and he's using his fourth engine already any other engine it takes now will result into a penalty in canada you can remember that i told you, you used another engine but unfortunately that engine went berserk and they had to put the former engine back into the car will that former engine still last will they be able to get the engine to do some laps but certainly it's looking like it's going to get one or two more engines before the end of the season that would require penalties we will get some more components that will require penalties and to say it again his teammate is going under a three place grid penalty for the incident in canada and what was the incident driving in an unsafe condition on the track and that is a big blow for them because even if he qualifies second or third which there's no guarantee that sergio perez will qualify in top six out of seven i can tell you that there's no guarantee so wherever he qualifies it will still be like three or four places behind his teammate which is not a good one to help max verstappen which takes us to the qualifying and the fp3 together first i'll talk about the fp3 the fp3 is so close very very close and it seems that there are four teams six drivers there could be seven but six now that are looking strong to take pole and to win this race six drivers and i'm talking about max verstappen Lewis hamilton lando norris george russell carlos Sainz, and charles leclerc any of them can take pole and any any of them can win this race because these guys are pushing they are pushing and carlos Sainz especially first practice third second practice second third practice first that guy is pushing himself he's really looking like this is my home race not taking pole not won a race in my home race ah i have to do something with this opportunity of ferrari he's pushing himself up. he's not going to just back down what can he take in qualifying he can't take zero <laughs> <laughs> but he can really knock it out in qualifying he can knock anybody out because he's looking fried tasty hot and Lando Norris Ogbenyimbe is looking like he wants to just do something he wants to put that McLaren in a position in which everybody will be like I told you unofficially Charles Leclerc is a master of qualifying on such tracks and in such conditions and he's not going to back down meanwhile Max Verstappen is a master of surprise in qualifying he can pull up a surprise even after having a bad free practice sessions he can pull up a surprise in qualifying and pull up a surprise in the race Lewis Hamilton is a master of right placement of car he also can pull up a surprise in that Mercedes though the Mercedes are improving can pull up a surprise likewise his teammate George Russell so we are here for it in qualifying but the FP3 there are lots of commotion what are the commotion Lewis Hamilton and Lance Stroll are going to be investigated after the FP3 because they had a season or a session of unhealthy transpiration in turn 8 when Lewis Hamilton was quite not off the road when Lance Stroll drove into him but I think Lance Stroll could have managed the road instead of driving into him but they are both going to see the stewards though Lewis Hamilton said he didn't see him well after seeing the steward they will know if they saw or didn't see each other Charles Leclerc and Lando Norris Lando Norris didn't really leave the road as quite as possible Possible. but Charles Leclerc why would you drive into him both of you go and see the stewards your head you should be correct Max Verstappen Lando Norris and Carlos Sainz again I don't understand where they expected Carlos Sainz that was on the first lap to take is it to take their middle or their before I don't understand what these drivers are thinking but the three of them also will go and see the stewards yes they have to see the stewards what we should understand is these drivers are running on different wing levels on the front and the rear wings and any alteration might change the effect in qualifying so I don't know what they will do but different wing levels different speed especially on the straight line for these cars and it shows that the ferraris are carrying a lot of speed on the straight line and they're having the speed advantage then the mclaren now to the Mercedes. so those are the top three on the speed advantage behind them comes rb rb can turn it up that is my um, analysis that i believe rb since they've been losing track of time in miami they've been using much of engine power which is amounting to them using more engines and i think that is why max verstappen have changed more engines than his team 
teammate, Checo Perez. Let's see what happens. Quickly talk on this issue, Lewis Hamilton and Mercedes situation. I think what is happening is because the Mercedes are really pushing Lewis Hamilton out of the growth model because they don't want him to take anything valuable in information to Ferrari. It's a normal thing in Formula 1. So the driver will be ousted of some meetings and some things. His teammate, George Russell, is taking advantage of the data and everything they are accumulating to get the advantage over Lewis Hamilton. But they are still using his data. So for me, I will see it as Mercedes. Why not leave Lewis Hamilton's data for him to use? Don't use his data so far. You will not be getting anything from you guys. As any information in data from you on what they are, you are doing or what is happening because he's leaving him clueless. He's really affecting his race and this is looking like a sabotage. Though you guys have a relationship and I said it in one of my podcasts that it's not that you are sabotaging it but it looks like a sabotage because if you are getting data from him, information grows from him and at the end of the day you are not giving him back because he's leaving or he's not getting value for what he's giving to help him on the track. It will be like sabotage and it will affect his race. So I think there should be a common ground in which the team can find especially through Toto with the team principle and with his experience with the team. Over 12 years, you guys should find a common ground that it will not affect him and also affect the team. So Mercedes should look at a way to deal with that situation because it's looking like a sabotage and a lot of people are calling it sabotage and it's affecting the team. So moving into qualifying, I know it was going to be a very good qualifying, but I can't tell you now it's going to be on pole. But I can tell you it's going to be between the Mercedes, the, the Ferrari, the McLaren and the Red Bull. Six good, wonderful drivers to take pole and to win the race tomorrow. You cannot miss the Spanish Grand Prix and the analysis. The analysis is going to be lit. I'm telling you. Catch you in the qualifying. <laughs> <laughs> wow, 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 wow. What a poll. See, I said it earlier that it's going to be a very close poll position. And I told you those that are likely to get the poll. What a poll. What a qualifying. This is already showing us how tomorrow's race would be. I thought it's going to be a very interesting race tomorrow. It's a good race we are having in our hands. A good one. And you cannot pay less for this because... It's going to be very, very interesting. Now, let me start from Q1. It was like a second and two tenths between the, the P1 and P20 in Q1. Logan Sargent really gave it all, but he impeded Lance Stroll. Fortunately, Lance Stroll was able to qualify, but Logan Sargent was unable to qualify as he qualified 20th on the grid. While Magnussen qualified 15th, the VCAB looked sharp at the beginning of this weekend but in the end they qualified Sunoda 17th Ricardo 18th and Alex Albon 19th now going into Q2 Alpine had been on it all through this weekend they've been spectacular they've been looking massive and great and Gasly has just been on point we don't know what is going on right there but Gasly has been on point. Ocon is living at the end of the season, but Gasly has just been lit on it. And Lewis Hamilton too has been lit on it this weekend, but not as we, we expected, but he has just been on fire all through the weekend. Unlike last weekend, from what I saw, from FP1, FP2, FP3, it shows that there has been a lot of learning from his teammate from his data because George Russell was nowhere close to him in FP1 or FP2. It was clear of though they were running different simulations but Hamilton ran more of high fuel in the FP1 and FP2 and he shows decent pace in long runs and in short runs unlike his teammate. Now coming into qualifying it shows that Hamilton is just on point. He didn't want to make too much mistake but there's nothing much showing that he's really devoted to what I believe he should be on the team. But Q2 Alonso 11th, Destin Martin Bottas 12, Hockenberg 13, Lance Stroll 14th, and Joe Guan Yu 15th. Going to the Q2. It was. <laughs> Woo! Going into Q. Three. <laughs> the Q3 was spectacular. Seriously, the Q3 was spectacular. You need to just understand how spectacular it was. Now, Verstappen already set the pole position on their first run. In the second run, the Ferrari got close, but they were unable to get the time. So, the Ferrari really nicked up some time, but they were not so close. They were about four tenths of certainly about three to four tenths of the main pace, with Charles Leclerc coming in fifth and Carlos Sainz in sixth. And their time was almost identical. It was like 5,000 identical. That was massive. Gasly, 7th. What a lap from Pierre Gasly. The Alpine looks functional. Perez, 3 grid place penalty. Qualified 8th. Good one for him. 6 tenths behind his teammate. Ocon Knight. The Alpine, like I said, is looking sensational now. They've trimmed the weight. They are back towards where they need to be. They need to sort out their engine for 2026. Piastri could not set time. When he was about setting his beautiful time, he ran off into the gravel. <sighs> now to the top 4. <laughs> on the second run, Verstappen was setting that beautiful time. He was on it. 
Max Verstappen was on it. He had already taken out the two slow Ferrari. Four tenths behind him. He was not even thinking about them. Unfortunately, he got the pole. Right there. He was there. He was there waiting. Waiting. Lando Norris. Lando Norris. I don't know where they should put that guy. Got pole from Max Verstappen. 200. He got the pole from him. Great friends are going to stand side by side. For the second time this season. Ha <laughs> ha! And the Mercedes were three tenths behind. Lewis Hamilton doing all he can. You know, the trust, the feel is just coming back into that W15. So they were close. But it's going to be a great race tomorrow. I can assure you that the Mercedes are closely knitted. If they can run their race neatly and run with brain, I'm telling you, it's going to be a big pressure on Norris and Max Verstappen. But Norris has nothing to lose. Max Verstappen has everything to lose. <laughs> It's going to be hot. I'm telling you because we have the two friends, Lando Norris P1, Max Verstappen P2 in the first row. The two Mercedes, Louis Hamilton P3, George Russell P4, second row. And the two Ferraris, third row. You cannot expect anything less than bananas and bangers tomorrow. Up until tomorrow. But this race, let me tell you, is going to be... <laughs> um... Two constructors on the podium. Mercedes or Mercedes engine. Max Verstappen will give it all, I believe. Max Verstappen might end up on the podium, but he's not sure because the pressure that is coming on after him might put him in a place he would not be able to enjoy. But I can tell you, either Mercedes engine or Mercedes constructor, they are going to be on the podium. Up until tomorrow. Yeah! I love you guys. Bye. <laughs>